بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم <تصفيق> الحمد لله رب العالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد قال شيخ الإسلام محمد بن عبد الوهاب رحمه الله تعالى وغفر له في رسالته نواقض للإسلام أسادس من استهزأ بشيء من دين الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم أو ثواب الله أو عقابه كفر والدليل قوله تعالى قل أب الله وآياته ورسوله كنتم تستهزئون لا تأتذروا قد كفرتم بعد إيمانكم So <coughs> the Sheikh he starts the lesson this lesson by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sending Salutations upon the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he mentions here he quotes the original author Sheikh Al Islam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab in his book Nawaqid Al Islam, which we've been studying over the last twenty lessons or so. The nullifiers of Al Islam and those things that nullify one's Islam. And he mentions the sixth uh, nullifier, and he says the sixth nullifier is the one who mocks and makes fun of the religion of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam or from the rewards of allah that which allah has promised the believers from rewards of rewards or that which allah has promised the disbelievers of punishment or just generally punishments then whoever makes fun of any of these things whoever makes fun of the deen of allah jalla wa ala and that what the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam came with of information commandments and prohibitions etc then whoever does this he ends up disbelieving if he was upon islam and then does this he ends up disbelieving and the sheikh then says and the uh he quotes the original author again and the evidence for that is the two ayahs that we read from surah at-tawbah and if we go to the meanings the english meanings of uh, this verse then we'll see and we'll learn what it means so then the sheikh mentions these and he says here uh, say was it allah and his proofs evidences verses lessons signs and revelations etc and his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam that you were mocking and then the next ayah part of the next ayah make no excuse you have disbelieved after you had believed so the sheikh mentions that as evidence and then sheikh abdul razak al badr goes on to explain it here so we'll read through it inshallah the sheikh he goes on to say hadha naqid as-sadis min nawaqid al-islam wa huwa man istahza'a bi shay'in min din ar-rasul aw thawabihi aw iqabihi kafar al-istihza'u huwa as-sukhriyatu wa tahakkum wa huwa naw'un min al-mu'arada وعدم التسليم ومن المعلوم أن الإسلام استسلام وموافقة وانقياد وتوعية الاستسلام هو الاستسلام لله بالتوحيد والانقياد له بالطاعة والبراءة والخلوص من الشرك فالإسلام موافقة والاستهزاء معارضة ومخالفة ولهذا كان المستهزئ بالذي بالذين أو بالدين أو بثواب الذي أعده الله سبحانه أو بالإقاب معارضا وليس بموافق وهذا مصادم تمام المصادمة لدين الله جل وعلا فمن فعل ذلك انتقل من من الملة وكان من الكافرين لأن الإسلام موافقة والاستهزاء معارضة المسلم موافق معذم ممتثل منقاد والمستهزئ معارض لدين الله تبارك وتعالى ولهذا كان الدين موضع استهزاء عنده وسخرية ولهذا يكون المستهزئ كافرا بدين الإسلام وليس من المسلمين ولا يمكن أن يقوم استهزاء بالدين استهزاء بالدين ممن يعظم دين الله عز وجل ويقدر شرعه حق قدره بل لا يكون الاستهزاء 
So the Sheikh basically says in this paragraph that we've read, this long, longish paragraph, he says, he introduces what the original author mentions, and we've gone through that already. He says that this is the sixth nullifier of Islam, and we mentioned it earlier, so we won't repeat that part. And he goes on to explain this word al istihza and as we know in English, it's uh, mocking and making fun and talking down. Uh, about whatever it is And obviously here is about the deen of Islam Or whatever the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Has come with Of news, uh, commandments Or prohibitions These are three things that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came with And The Shaykh says that When somebody mocks or makes fun Of the deen or whatever it is Then this is a type of uh, Turning away and rejecting um, Rejecting that thing And also, it is it shows um, a lack of a complete absence of uh, humbling and lowering yourself and submission. And the Sheikh says, and from what's known that Islam, it is humbling yourself, lowering yourself. It's agreeing with that which the Prophet has come with. It's you know, put your head down and you know, and lowering yourself and being obedient to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, whatever the Prophet has had came with. And so the Sheikh says, al Islam, it is submitting yourself and humbling yourself to Allah or for Allah with with this Tawheed, the Tawheed of Allah. Yeah. And knowing your place, lowering yourself, surrendering yourself, and being obedient to Allah. Jalla and it's freeing yourself from shirk, as we know. So then the Sheikh says, So Islam is is being in agreement, you know, being in agreement with that which Allah sent the Prophet ﷺ with And mocking and talking down Then that, as the Shaykh said earlier It's a type of turning away and rejecting And being in opposition uh, uh, To the deen of Allah Jalla wa'ala. And the Shaykh says This is the reason why The uh, person who mocks the deen of Allah Or, or whatever Allah promised of reward uh, From whatever he has prepared for the believers The successful ones Or in terms of his punishment as whatever he has prepared of punishment for, for those people, disbelievers or whoever um, Allah decides the punishment is for, then whoever, uh, then obviously mocking this is turning away from it and it's it doesn't have that, the person is not in agreement and going in line with that which Allah has revealed by way of the Prophet ﷺ and it's clashing and colliding with the deen of Allah Jalla wa'ala. When somebody's mocking and talking, some talking it uh, down about it. So then the Sheikh says, "Whoever does this, then he has moved away from the Deen of Islam and ends up becoming a disbeliever. Because, as you mentioned earlier, Islam is being in agreement with that which Allah sent the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with, and mocking and uh, talking down about the religion is obviously in direct opposition to that and turning away from it. So." The Sheikh just mentions what he mentioned earlier here and summarizes that the Muslim is a person who is in agreement with whichever, whatever the deen of, uh, whatever the deen contains. And he acts upon that and he lowers himself, you know, and he submits himself to Allah Jalla wa'ala. And, and on the op- opposite side of that is the one who mocks and talks down and rejects uh, the deen of Allah Tabaraka wa ta'ala. And this is what the Sheikh is saying here. So then he says that the person who mocks the deen of Allah, anything from the deen of Allah, then he is a disbeliever in Islam. And he's not from the, the Muslims. So this is what the Shaykh mentioned here. And then the Shaykh mentions in this last sentence, in the paragraph, that this person is not, the reason why they also leave the fold of Islam, as well as that they're not magnifying the deen of Allah Jalla wa ala, And they're not, Taking it seriously as it should be taken seriously, and they're joking about and mocking, and this is the reason for their disbelief, their disbelief in Islam, and you know, causing all types of oppression. So the Sheikh continues. He says, "Qala man istahza bi shayin min din al Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam, man istahza bi shayin min ma amar bihi al Rasul alaihi salatu wasallam, aw naha." عنه ودينه أوامر ونواهي 
فمن استهزاء بشيء من الأوامر أو استهزاء استهزاء بشيء من نواهي كفر كمن يستهزاء مثلا بالصلاة أو يستهزاء يستهزاء بالصيام أو يستهزاء بالحج أو يستهزاء بالبر والصلة والإحسان أو يستهزاء بالسنن التي دعا إليها صلوات الله وسلامه عليه أو يستهزاء بنهي النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام عن الربا مثلا أو عن الزنا أو عن عن السرقة أو عن القتل أو نحو ذلك فمن استهزاء بشيء مما جاء به الرسول بدين الرسول عليه الصلاة والسلام فهو كافر. So then the Sheikh goes on to say here, just following on, he says, so whoever mocks a thing, a thing from the what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam commanded us with, or what he um, what he uh, uh, prohibited us from, then whoever mocks even any of this, then he he ends up becoming a disbeliever. For example, the Sheikh says, for example, if somebody uh, mocks the prayer, or somebody mocks uh, fasting, or somebody mocks the ha Hajj, the pilgrimage, for example, or somebody who uh, mocks uh, all kinds of good deeds, and for example, keeping family ties and encouraging these sort of things, whoever mocks this kind of anything from the deen of Allah, then he leaves the fold of all Islam. Likewise, from the prohibitions, whoever mocks the prohibitions, such as for example, the Sheikh brings an example. He says, for example, interest. Usually in interest, anybody who mocks that, then uh, he leaves the deen. Likewise, uh, fornication, for example, stealing, uh, killing, uh, and these sort of things. For example, just as some examples the Sheikh has given us to help us in our understanding. The Sheikh says, so whoever um, mocks or makes fun of that which the Prophet ﷺ came with in summary, then he has disbelieved. The Shaykh he goes on to say, وَكَذَلِكَ مَنْ اسْتَهْزَأَ بِثَوَابِ الدِّينِ أَوْ الْإِقَابِ بِثَوَابِ الْمَوَافِقِ وَإِقَابِ الْمُخَالِفِ مَنْ اسْتَهْزَأَ بِذَلِكَ كَفْرَةً كَمَنْ يَسْتَهْزِئُ مَثَلًا بِالْجَنَّةِ أَوْ بِشَيْءٍ مِنْ نَعِيمِهَا وَمَا أَعَدَّهُ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى فِيهَا مِنْ أَنْوَاءِ مِنْ أَنْوَاءِ الثَّوَابِ uh, فَمَنْ اسْتَهْزَأَ بِالْجَنَّةِ أَوْ بِشَيْءٍ مِنَ النَّعِيمِ الَّذِي عَدَّهُ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى فِي الْجَنَّةِ كَفَرْ وَكَذَلِكَ مَنْ اسْتَهْزَأَ بِثَوَابِ الْأَعْمَالِ تَجِدُ فِي أَحَادِيثِ كَثِيرَةً كَذَا مَنْ فَعَلَ كَذَا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَنْ فَعَلَ كَذَا فَلَهُ كَذَا مَنْ اسْتَهْزَأَ بِشَيْءٍ مِنْ ثَوَابِ الْأَعْمَالِ وَلَوْ فِي حَدِيثٍ وَاحِدٍ كَفَرْ لِأَنَّ الِاسْتِهْزَاءَ لِأَنَّ الِاسْتِهْزَاءَ مُعَارَضَةٌ لِدِينِ اللَّهِ so then the Sheikh says, and likewise, unlike that, whoever mocks and makes fun out uh, fun of um, uh, the reward that Allah will give to those who deserve that reward and the punishment that Allah will uh, give to those who deserve the punishment. If anybody makes fun or mocks this, then he ends up becoming a disbeliever and leaves the fold of Islam by way of that. For example, the Sheikh gives us just a couple of examples here. He says, for example, if somebody uh, makes fun of paradise, heaven, or somebody makes fun of uh, some of its or anything from it, uh, you know, um, the blessings that you find within heaven or paradise, uh, and that which Allah has prepared. So if you find anybody who does that, they end up leaving the fold of Islam. And the Sheikh mentions um, also, he says, for example, whoever also makes fun of uh, actions, doing like good deeds for a reward, as um, uh, we find in many ahadith of the Prophet you know, uh, with the example of uh, uh, if whoever does such and such, you know, he will be um, forgiven, or whoever does such and such, he will be rewarded with such and such. These kinds of hadith like that. Anybody makes fun of these hadith or mocks them, then he ends up leaving the fold of Islam as well. Likewise, why? Because the person is opposing uh, and belittling the Deen of Allah Jalla and 
uh, is not submitting himself uh, and um, giving uh, the due diligence that he should for the uh, and hold up Islam as he should, and therefore he ends up leaving the fold of Islam and then he gets his uh, and then he gets his second shahada uh, that uh, the second shahada testifying that there's none uh, uh, testifying that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is a servant or messenger of Allah. Because obviously when he's making the fun of whatever the Prophet has said, then he's, he's just negated a clear negation of the second testification. So the Shaykh goes on to say, وَكَذَلِكَ مَنْ اسْتَهْزَأَ بِالْإِقَابِ كَأَنْ لِأَهْلِ النَّارِ مِنْ عَذَابٍ وَعُقُوبًا أو, استح... أو استهزأ بشيء من العقوبات لا, يق... لا, يقبل الله... لا يقبل الله له عمل أو لا يدخل الجنة أو لا يجد ريحها أو ليس منا أو نحو ذلك فمن استهزأ بشيء من الثواب أو استهزأ بشيء من اللقاب فقد كفن وذلك أن المستهزئ أن المستهزئة غير محقق للاستسلام والموافقة لشرع الله جل وعلا والانقياد والتوعية والامتثال بل هو معارض ساخر متحكم غير معظم لشرع الله عز وجل لم يقدر دين الله جل وعلا حق قدره فيكون بذلك من الكافرين فالاستهزاء كفر أكبر من Millat al Islam. So the Sheikh says, likewise, um, making the fun, making fun and mocking um, uh, the punishments that Allah will uh, hand out to those people who deserve those punishments. Likewise, any anything like that. For example, uh, people will be punished by being placed in the hellfire. As an example, anybody who mocks this kind, uh, this thing, then also he disbelieves. Because he's mocking that which Allah has revealed and that what the Prophet Sallallahu came with. And the Shaykh mentions some ahadith that also come, like where Allah will not accept uh, 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 from a person who does such and such or a, a person will not enter uh, paradise because of such and such or he won't smell its fragrance as in the fragrance of heaven or paradise because of such and such or he's not from us like when the hadith have these phrases in them. And the likes of that, as the Sheikh says, then whoever makes fun and mocks these, then uh, then he ends up uh, he'll end up leaving the fold of Islam. And the Sheikh, as he mentions here, uh, this type of kufr is a greater kufr, is a greater disbelief, which makes the person leave the fold of Al Islam, the Deen of Al Islam. And the Sheikh he continues, he says, "Qala rahmahullah wa dalilu ay ala dalika qaul Allah subhanahu wa taala." قُلْ أَبِ اللَّهِ وَآيَاتِهِ وَرَسُولِهِ كُنْتُمْ تَسْتَحْزِئُونَ لَا تَأْتَذِرُوا قَدْ كَفَرْتُمْ بَعْدَ إِيمَانِكُمْ As mentioned earlier in the lesson from Surah At-Tawbah verse 65 and part of verse 66 قُلْ أَبِ اللَّهِ وَآيَاتِهِ وَرَسُولِهِ الْإِسْتَحْزَى بِاللَّهِ أَيْ بِأَذَمَتِهِ أو جلاله أو كماله أو أسماعه وصفاته جل وعلا كفر ناقل من ملة الإسلام وتوحيد الله جل وعلا قائم على تعذيمه والمستهزئ ليس معذما لله وقد قال الله تعالى وما قدر الله حق قدره والأرض جميعا قبته يوم القيامة والسماوات متويات بيمينه وقال الله تعالى ما لكم لا ترجون لله وقارا أي عذما وتعذيما لله عز وجل فالذي يستهزئ بالله أو بشيء من أسمائه أو بصفاته هذا كافر بالله العظيم كفرا أكبر ناقل من ملة الإسلام ولو صلى وصام لا يقبل الله منه صلاة ولا صيام. So then the Sheikh says here that he, he uh, refreshes our memory with uh, and reminds us of the ayah earlier uh, in the lesson. And then he also mentions here that whoever makes fun of Allah, uh, i.e. In, in terms of his greatness and his completeness, or for example, in his names and attributes, then this is also 
uh, um, the the greater disbelief and makes the person leave the fold of Al-Islam. And like that, the Sheikh mentions that the Tawheed of Allah, the the uh, Islamic monotheism with regards to our deen, the Tawheed of Allah, Jalla it is established upon magnifying Allah Jalla So whoever mocks and makes fun of the deen or Allah Jalla Wala, then obviously he's not magnifying. He's not, he's not magnifying Allah. He's not glorifying Allah. He's doing the opposite. And the Sheikh says, this is why Allah Jalla Wala mentioned here. And that's from Surah Al-Zumar. So if we, we read that in Arabic, so let's go to Surah Al-Zumar. Uh, Zumar, verse 67. They made not a just estimate of Allah, such as is due to him. And on the day of resurrection, the whole of the earth will be grasped by his hand, and the heavens will be rolled up in his right hand. Uh, glorified is he, and high is he above all that they associate as partners with him. And then the Sheikh mentions uh, Pab Ayah 13 from Surah an Nuh. Oh, actually, all of Ayah 13. What is the matter with you that you fear not Allah's punishment and you hope not for reward from Allah or you believe not in his oneness? So then the Sheikh says, i.e. Uh, Allah's oneness, Allah's greatness. Yeah. Uh, and the Sheikh says, the one who then mocks and makes fun of Allah with whatever it may be of his names, attributes, then he has uh, has left the fold of Al-Islam and renders him a disbeliever in Islam and in Allah. And takes him out of the fold of Islam. Uh, even if he prayed, even if he prays and he fasts. Because Allah, in this situation like this, Allah will not accept his prayer, nor will Allah accept his fasting. Any of his worship, basically. So the Shaykh, he continues, he says to us, وَكَذَلِكَ Al-Mustahzi'u bi ayati Allahi wal murad bi ayatihi ay al-mitluwati ay kalamuhu subhanahu wa ta'ala faman istahza'a bil Qur'ani aw bi shay'in min surihi aw bi shay'in min ayatihi walaw ayatan wahidatan qur'at lahu aw qara'aha fastahzi'a wa sakhara fa innahu yakfuru bi dhalika li anna hadha al-istahza'a qa'im Ala ghayri ta'zeem illahi wa ta'zeem kalamihi subhanahu wa ta'ala So then in this short paragraph the shaykh goes on to say to us Like that and like that The one who mocks the verses of the Quran The Quran, the verses, any of its verses Even if it's just one verse or any of its chapters Anything from the Quran If anybody mocks anything from the Quran It renders them a disbeliever Because it's denigrating the deen and denigrating the speech of Allah Jalla wa'ala. And as the Shaykh mentioned in the previous paragraph as well, that it's not glorifying and magnifying Allah Jalla wa'ala. It's the opposite of that. So the Shaykh continues says, وَكَذَلِكَ مَنْ اسْتَهْزَأَ بِالرَّسُولَ عَلَيْهِ سَلَاةُ وَسَلَامُ اسْتَهْزَأَ بِهِ أَوْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنْ أَوْصَافِهِ وَأَخْلَاكِهِ وَأَمَالِهِ وَأَدَابِهِ وَشَمَائِلِهِ صَلَوَاتُ اللَّهِ وَسَلَامُهُ عَلَيْهِ أو استهزأ بشيء مما جاء به صلى الله عليه وسلم فإنه يكفر بذلك. And likewise, whoever mocks and makes fun of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, or with whatever he came with, or or anything of his descriptions, his attributes, his etiquette and mannerisms, his actions. Uh, any of his characteristics, physical characteristics even, then the person who does this and mocks any of this, then and mocks the Prophet ﷺ, by that he also disbelieves in, in Islam and leaves the fold of Al-Islam. And then the Shaykh mentions the evidence again from the start of the lesson. Yeah, the two ayahs that we mentioned earlier. Then the Shaykh says, وَهَذِي الْآيَةَ نَزَلَتْ كَمَا جَاءَ فِي كُتُبِ التَّفْسِيرِ وَمِنْهَا تَفْسِيرُ بْنُ جَرِيرَ الطَّبَرِي رَحْمَ اللَّهِ مِنْ طُرُقْ نَزَلَتْ فِي نَفَرٍ فِي غَزْوَةِ تَبُوك اِسْتَهْزَأُوا بِالنَّبِيِّ الْكَرِيمِ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ وَبِقُرَّاءِ الصَّحَابَةِ رضي الله عنهم وعرضاهم اِسْتَهْزَأُوا بِهِمْ وَقَالَ أَحَدُهُمْ مُسْتَحْزِئًا سَاخِرًا بطونا ولا أكذب ألسنا 
ولا اجبن عند اللقاء هكذا قال وهذه كلمات استهزاء وتحكم وسخريه استهزاء وتحكم وسخريه بالنبي عليه الصلاه والسلام وبقراء الصحابه رضي الله عنهم وارضاهم so then just just before carry on we'll, uh, we'll start with the translating this section so the sheikh says and also in the um, in the books of tafsir and the sheikh quotes uh, uh, ibn jarir tabari rahimahullah uh, he mentions here that this ayah these two ayahs that are highlighted here that we mentioned at the start of the lesson when the sheikh mentioned them hafizullah they were they were sent down so the reason why they were sent down on revealed were because of um, a group of people from the muslims a group of people they were mocking and making fun of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the a group of the sahaba um during the battle of tabuk ghazwa to tabuk the battle of tabuk and they were making fun and they said the likes of this they basically said uh they basically said we've never seen the likes of these muslims meaning the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the sahaba uh um the likes of these people who all they care about is filling their stomach with food basically that's what they said and uh we uh, we never heard so many lies on their tongues as in calling them liars and calling them cowards as in when they come to the battle when they come for battle or in that situation calling them cowards this is what some of these the group of muslims were saying about the sahaba and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the sheikh says that if you if we analyze these words clearly uh without thinking too much about it it's mocking and talking down uh, and denigrating uh the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and uh, his companions uh, uh, may allah be pleased with them and the sheikh continues he says qala ma ra'ina mithla qura'ina haula qura'ina yaqsudu nahnu almuslimin ma ra'ina mithla qura'ina uh yani nah nahnu almuslimin mithla qura'ina haula argab butunum wala akdaba alsunan wala ajban ain da liqa argab butun ay laysa lahum ham illa alakal yatahakkam bihim wa wa yashur wa wa yasifuhum bi annahum la ham lahum illa alakal wa anhum ahl aljubn wa akdab alsunan wala ajban ain da liqa annahum ahl alkadhib wa anhum ahl aljubn wa khawf fa wasam bi hadhi sifat wal haqq أن هذه صفات المنافقين وليس صفات الصحابة الأصحاب النبي الكريم عليه الصلاة والسلام وعشاهم وبرأهم الله عز وجل فهذه ليست صفات صفاتهم وقول وقول القائل لذلك هو في في الحقيقة من باب رمتني بداء بدائها بدائها وانسلت هذه ليست صفة الصحابة. so then the sheikh explains this breaks it down a little bit for us here. Alhamdulillah, and he says that this speech basically is saying, and he explains it more uh, in a bit more detail. He says it's saying basically that the Prophet and the Sahaba, they are the, they are people of lies, they liars, and they are cowards and are, are scared, are fearful, and these are the kind of attributes that those that that group of people uh, said about them, and the Sheikh says. but if we analyze these traits right and if we if we analyze these traits and the, oh, sorry and i forgot to mention and and the other um uh, accusation was that all the carabies filling their stomachs with food then if you analyze these traits those three things that they mentioned if we if we if we carefully analyze them and think about them and ponder over them then the sheikh says that these are actual attributes of the hypocrites and the, the hypocrites obviously who said that is they actually they actually it's about them really because actually they carry those attributes and those characteristics and the sheikh mentions this here and he goes on to say uh obviously this is false accusation about about people obviously because the sahaba Allah freed them of these characteristics Allah freed them of these lowly characteristics and as we know what ensued afterwards was that uh those ones who said uh, this about the prophet and the and the and the group of sahaba they uh, they were rendered hypocrites they were hypocrites themselves so then as we know in the story this is well known but the sheikh mentions he says fa sama'ahu 
فسمعه اوف بن مالك رضي الله عنه فقال كذبت لا اخبرن بذلك رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وانطلق اوف رضي الله عنه ليبلغ النبي عليه الصلاه والسلام ويستفاد من يستفاد ويستفاد من هذا ان ابلاغ ولي الامر بمثل هذا العدوان ومثل هذا الظلم والبغي والتهكم بالدين او باهل او باهله او برسول عليه الصلاه والسلام من المطالب من الامور المطلوبه وهو داخل في الامر بالمعروف والنهي عن المنكر قال كذبت لا اخبرن بذلك رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم so then the sheikh finishes this this hadith of fours and he says and when awf ibn malik radiyallahu anhu may allah be pleased with him one of the sahaba he heard this from this group of people he said i'm going to inform surely i'm going to inform the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam of what you said and he rushed off he went to tell the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam about what what they have said from these uh, uh of of this mockery and uh false accusations and down talking the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and uh, the sahaba and the sheikh says there's a benefit here that when things like this happen is permissible and it's from the deen that you can go and tell the a person in charge whether that's the leader of a country or somebody in charge or an authority you can inform them to uh, of the transgressions that they commit in order to put a stop to it um uh, and 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 this is what is sought in these sorts of affairs this is what the sheikh mentions and and this uh, and this kind of thing it is uh, within uh, commanding the good is part of commanding the good and forbidding the evil um and so the sheikh mentions that that uh, uh, awf ibn malik radiyallahu anhu informed the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam of what they said so the sheikh says when talaka awf radiyallahu anhu li yukhbir an nabiy alayhi salatu wasalam fa wajada an al wahya sabaqa and as we know in the story that before the uh it was before awf ibn malik radiyallahu uh, radiyallahu anhu reached the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam allah had already revealed it to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam of what he had said and as we know from the ayah the two ayahs that we read earlier the start of the lesson qul abillahi wa ayatihi wa wa rasulihi kuntum tastahzi'un la ta'tadru qad kafartum ba'da imanikum say were you uh, making fun of allah of allah or his messenger yeah were you making fun and mocking allah and his messenger don't uh, you're not you're not excused there's no excuse for you you surely you uh, you have indeed you have disbelieved after you had believed and then the sheikh says waqad akhadha jama'atun min ahli al-ilm min qawlihi qad kafartum ba'da imanikum an an qa'ili hadhihi al-maqala kanu muslimin wa annahum bi hadhihi al-kalima kafaru wa irtaddu an deen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa kanat kalimatuhum hadhihi naqilatun min 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 millati min al-milla qala qad kafartum ba'da imanikum قد كفرتم اي بهذا الاستهزاء بعد ايمانكم اي بعد ان ان كنتم من اهل الايمان كفرتم اي ان ان انتقلتم من المله so then the sheikh says here as mentioned he says that before of رضي الله عنه reached the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم Allah had already informed through revelation informed the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم about what happened as you can see in these two ayahs and the sheikh says with regards to the part where uh, the part of this ayah where allah says indeed you have disbelieved after you had believed then the sheikh says that some of the people of knowledge the scholars they say that uh, they they extrapolate from there or from in terms of explanation explaining is that that shows us that these people were upon belief they were muslims so but then they disbelieved because of what they said of mockery and making fun of the deen of Allah and this is what the sheikh has mentioned there so insha Allah okay in 5 minutes hopefully in 5 minutes we can wrap up the lesson bin la ta'ala so we'll finish in about 5 minutes so the sheikh mentions he continues he says wa fi hadha khuturatul lisani al baligha wa anna al insana qad yaqulu bi lisanihi kalimatan wahidatan tubiqu dunyahu wa ukhra تهلكه في الدنيا والاخره ويكب بها في نار جهنم خالدا فيها ابد الاباد فهذا فيه خطوره اللسان وان الكلمه 
وأن الكلمة التي تخرج من اللسان ليست بالهينة ولهذا قال عليه الصلاة والسلام وهل يكب الناس على وجوههم أو قال على مناخرهم إلا حصائد ألسنتهم فالكلمة التي تخرج من اللسان أخطر ما تكون ولهذا كان لزاما على ال على العبد ومتأكدا عليه أن يحفظ لسانه وأن يسونه وأن لا يتكلم بلسانه بكلمة إلا وهو يعلم أنها خير من كان يؤمن بالله واليوم الآخر فليقول خيرا أو ليسمت فلا يتكلم بكلمة إلا وهو يعلم أنها خير أما إذا كانت الكلمة شرا فلا يجوز أن يتكلم بها قد يتكلم بها وتوبقه يقول الرجل الكلمة لا لا يلقي لها بالا يحوي فيها في النار سبعين خريفا كما قال ذلك رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال من كان يؤمن بالله واليوم الآخر فليقول خيرا أو ليسمت أي إذا كان الذي يقوله تأكد أنه خير قاله وإلا فليسمت So this is the important point the Sheikh brings. He says, he says, so, he says that the tongue, the tongue, it can be very dangerous. And the affair of the tongue, as in speaking and saying words, is all, we're always in a dangerous situation about, with regards to it and what we say, what can be said. And the Sheikh says that the, the person, the person, you know, maybe he says something. It could even be just one word. And because of that word or sentence, it could it could destroy his dunya, his worldly life, and his hereafter, afterlife as well. It destroys his dunya and his afterlife. And because of what he may have said and uttered, he's, he'll be thrown on his face in the hell and dragged to the hellfire on his face. And he'll be there forever if he dies upon that, of course. So the Sheikh says, so in in with regards to the tongue then, you know, it's a very dangerous matter. And that a word that may come out of your mouth is not something that should be taken lightly. We should think before we say something. We should think. And this is why the Sheikh says, and this is why the Prophet Wasallam said also about with, with regards to this affair. Do the people, do people get dragged upon their faces into the hellfire, for example, or upon their nostrils get dragged because of what they said on their tongues, basically, what they said, what come out of their mouths. So the Sheikh says, whatever comes out of your mouth in terms of what's on your tongue, what's pronounced on your tongue, what comes out of your mouth of what you say, it, it, is, it can be dangerous, very dangerous, because it's, easily, it's easy for us to say. In seconds, you could be saying anything. It's very easy, so we have to be very careful in what we say and we should practice restraint and we should make sure and assure ourselves before we say something that is what am I is what am I going to say? Is it beneficial? Is it good what I'm saying or not? And if it's good then say it. And if it is not good, if it's something evil or wrong, or if you're in a doubtful matter about it, then be quiet. It's better to be quiet. And this is why the Prophet also said in a hadith, whoever believes in Allah and the last day, i.e. the day of judgment, then he should, he should speak good, he should say something good, or be silent. Say something good or beneficial, and if you haven't got anything beneficial or good to say, just be quiet, be quiet. Practice restraint. So the Sheikh, he goes on to mention this, and he continues, and he says, so he mentions what we've already said, and the Sheikh says that in a se in seconds you could utter something without thinking about what you're saying, and you could, like he said earlier, you could end up because of that destroying your dunya and your akhirah, your, your your worldly life and your and your, and your afterlife. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned as well, and then the Sheikh mentions the same hadith again with regards to saying whoever believes in uh, uh, whoever believes in Allah on the last day say good. Or be quiet or remain silent. And inshallah, I think what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll stop here 
and we'll finish ex- the Sheikh will explain this in a bit more detail but we'll stop here and continue this next week um, we may change the time um, uh, to 8 o'clock because Maghrib is a lot earlier now so, but I will let you know so uh, just bear in mind uh, the lesson most likely is going to start at 8 o'clock from next Friday onwards inshallah and I'll keep you brothers updated um, so inshallah let's wrap up there and uh, we'll meet again next week bin Allah ta'ala subhanakallahu wa bihamdika ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta wa astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh